going on. Someone kicking off over there. He's not going by free will. In the rainforests of the Congo. Hidden beneath the canopy. Live an extraordinary group of people who spend their entire lives in the jungle. A pygmy tribe called the Benjeli Bayaka. They're some of the last of their kind. Still living largely cut off from the outside world. And they're allowing me to live with them. <laughs> what a welcome! Yeah. My name is Livia Simoka and I'm a filmmaker. My work takes me to remote corners of the world and for the last five years, I've been fascinated by the life of the Benjeli. That is tonight's dinner. Over the next year, I'll be spending five months in the Congo and I'll be living with a family. I've traveled nearly 5,000 miles to a tiny village called Bonginda, where around 250 pygmies live today. So far, I've discovered that the Benjeli suffer at the hands of their larger neighbors. And I've seen how my host Akaya's marriage could be torn apart by their feuding families. This time, Akaya's relationship gets explosive. And I witness the shocking reality of Bantu power. over two months living with a pygmy tribe called the Benjeli. <laughs> My host Mama and her husband Papa <laughs> have made me feel like one of the family. Show you my breakfast. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, but go again, go. Very mm. spicy jabuka. Mm. Mm. I'm not big with spice. But the bag with the new one, Baza. It's blowing my head off. I bust up. Baza. The chef this morning was Mama's sister, Masengi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spicy. This is a Mosengi and Mundongas party house next door. <laughs> What's that? Ngaku. 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 only shop from her front room. It doubles as a social club and it's at the heart of village life. Which is the biggest seller? That's why this is always the party house. Does Mondonga get involved in the business as well? Mondonga, yasunga mi biye, bobo me diva mendo bodi yasunga mi na mambongo angu bodi na me bocha mi sunga na ni na me angu mendo. He's a good husband. Yeah, di na budi. 
So he is a uh, Bantu guy that's come up from the neighbouring village of Monbalu. The Benjeli refer to all their non-pygmy neighbours as Bantu. This is actually Bantu land. Bonginda used to be inhabited by both Bantu and Benjeli, and then all the Bantus moved down to the river, to the neighbouring village of Monbalu. But this is still Bantu land, so I think they do all feel like they still have, you know, a bit of a hold on Benjelis. That whole Benjeli and Bantu relationship is definitely very, very dark and one that I really want to try and find out a bit more about. There are now no Bantu living permanently in Bonginda. They've moved six kilometers away, half a day's trek through dense jungle to Mombalu, on the banks of the Mataba River. Unlike the Benjeli, the Bantu are not hunter-gatherers. They farm, trade with other villages along the river, and have access to modern technology. The Bantu often seek to exploit their smaller pygmy neighbours. <laughs> this is Yvonne, Mama's eldest. Yvonne and his mate Prince have uh, apparently got a python that they've uh, chopped up and smoked. Prince is Yvonne's mate that lives down in the other village. He's a Bantu guy. It's quite unusual to have uh, Benjeli and Bantu be mates, but the two of them often go hunting together. Hello! <laughs> Party! Though it is rare, Yvonne seems to have a genuine friendship with his Bantu pal Prince. Oh wow, look at this! Is that the python? Oh, can I try a bit? Quite smoky. Not bad. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yvonne often borrows Prince's shotgun for hunting, as it's rare for Benjeli to own their own weapons. Check these guys out. What's that? Is that your gun? <laughs> <laughs> None of the kids have toys out here, so they make guns out of a bunch of bamboo. <laughs> Someone kicking off over there. 
got no idea what it's all about. Granting jelly to start having the prince is involved as well, I don't really know what's going on. It's actually auntie's husband that he's fucking taking out. Prince and another Bantu from Mombalu called Loris are trying to drag Mondonga into the forest. I think he's dragging him to Mombalu and he's not going by free will. I'm in the rainforests of Central Africa, caught up in a violent dispute. Masengi's husband Mondonga has been beaten and dragged into the forest by Prince and another Bantu called Loris. Prince's mask has definitely fucking slipped. It seems like the guy in the purple who's been at the house stopped the fight. Did he hit you? Mm. Oh. Oh. Mm. Oh. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Got absolutely no idea yet what all that was about, but he got him clearly a huge whack on the nose and he's got a nosebleed and uh, I've got no idea why um, Prince is also coming back to Bonginda because that surely is a recipe for disaster. So here, oh Prince, just stay back a minute, stay back, just calm down for a minute. Let's just calm down, like, things will get worse. If you go back now, the fight's going to start, so just fucking chill out for a little bit. What was all that about? I remain down. I think I'm going to go back to my 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 I'm going to go what were you going to do to him? Je préfère. Is it true that the Bantu own the Benjeli? Mundongana azabu kilo. Bi a balende mumbenga kutuna ngai. Ane bukilo. So you, so you own Akaya's family? Do you think it's a fair situation? d'abord it's the first time ever that I've heard Bantu admit that they own a family. I'm honestly so shocked that somebody like Prince can get away with beating people and that it's a completely accepted way of life. This dispute over a debt has been running for some time. And when Prince took Mondonga's valuable head torch as collateral a few days ago, the situation escalated. All right, is your nose OK? Mm, it's beer. It's beer. Mm. Hurts, yeah. Has this happened before? Baola ubara, takai me bodi kana bundogi. Bodi ape, baba wali bodi me kana mba uba. Me doakane bo kibo me libre toshi. Bo ape, yebo 
Mondonga is saying that a few days ago, Prince and Loris pulled a gun on him and shots were fired. I was probably quite naive before I came out here to think that the relationship between the Bantus and the Benjeli would be more harmonious than what it is. I'll be quite intrigued to see what happens with this Bantu court and if it's a fair system, because automatically you'd assume that they'll always lean in favour of their own. I've heard that uh, the Benjeli chief's in town. Chief Marlow lives in the Bantu village Mombalu. But he and his wife Bemba also have a house here in Bonginda. <laughs> How did you become chief? Medi Konga Pase Batai Bangamu, Bakabani Mema Yale, so see the tea, Unjo Yangamu Boba Kabemona Bokon. And what jobs do you have to do as the chief? I sengo, Musala Wakunga, Abokunji, Musawa Abokunja Tony, Walita. But so why are you going back to Mombalu? Why don't you just stay here in Bonginda? Despite the adversity they face, Benjeli society is gregarious and playful. Family bonds are tight, with parenting duties often shared equally between husband and wife. There's no school in Bonginda, so kids learn from the nature around them. Oh, wow, look at this! But from the moment they can walk, they're developing the skills they need to survive in the jungle. It's just a bit of sort of role play and uh, mimicking his dad out on a hunt. And that includes hunting, foraging and personal health care. I got a jigger <laughs> and uh, Zillian is very, very excited to get her hands on them. A jigger is a little worm that buries itself into your feet and then goes and lays its eggs. And, uh, and you pop it out and squeeze the big egg sack out. Every couple of days, um, it's normally Silly Anne goes around inspecting everyone's feet and hands. Uh, she's the absolute jigger queen. Ah! Fuck it now. Oh God, look at the size of that beast. Look at the a boy. A boy. Oh. A boy. Oh. 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 Oh.
Yeah, that was quite uncomfortable because I think I've had it for a few days and it's kind of managed to gnaw its way right down there and uh, create a great big sack of eggs. <laughs> she absolutely loved that though. <laughs> Thank you. Ganja Queen! <laughs> The Benjeli don't have access to modern medical facilities, so they've become skilled in a number of procedures. Kaya's sister is here, and I've just found out that her little boy is about to get circumcised. There he is. There he is. Morning. Happy Pangwako. <laughs> don't know what's about to hit you, do you? Oh. And we're off. All infant Benjeli boys are circumcised. <laughs> the procedure is called the Kubwa and it's carried out by the senior men of the village. You see him holding the razor blade in his hand. <laughs> Having to stick with the women, I'm not allowed to go over there. So I'm just going to go in the house with Mum. I think she's naturally really upset. She knows the pain her little boy's about to go through. It's quite a plaster, that, isn't it? That all happened really quickly, didn't it? I'm sure in a couple of days' time he'll be absolutely fine. Where's the bit of skin gone? Okay. Oh, wow. And do you do anything to that? Come and give you a hand if you like. Yeah. Oh, right. I'll let you bury that and I'll uh, avert my eyes. It's been a bit of a stressful morning, hasn't it? <laughs> you okay, Mama? <laughs> yeah. Oh. And this little guy's brave little soul. Mm. <laughs> I just really want to know, why do all um, Benjeli boys get circumcised? And do you think it looks horrible if it hasn't been cut off? If you fall in love with a guy and then you get into bed and you realise he's got his foreskin, what are you going to do? Bomo. I'm a guy, I'm a guy, I'm a guy, I'm a bomo. I'm a guy, 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 I'
I've got one last question. Um, do the Ben Jelly, do you like, when you kiss each other, do you kiss each other's private parts as well? Mondonga's allegations that he was shot at and then attacked by Prince and his friend have secured him a hearing at the Bantu court. In this remote region, the Bantu chief acts as judge and jury. How are you feeling about today? So, because the court is run by the Bantus, is it, you know, is it a fair trial? They're being really fucking brave by going to court, standing trial, knowing full well that the repercussions and the fallout from it is not going to be pretty but I guess they just want to try and see some sort of justice served. And I really, really hope they get it. Montbelu is kind of like a town of two halves. This is the Benjeli pot. All the shelters here are kind of falling apart. They're overgrown. There's, they're not even made of mud, it's just sort of leaves that have been piled on top of each other. And then up by the river is a sort of posh part of town where all the Bantu live. This is kind of where the prime real estate is. So much more groomed here. Even though they haven't got any running water, they have got a satellite dish, a couple of solar panels, and they run stuff off car batteries. You can see why the Bantu want to live down here. It's uh, a like really easy trade route, transport links. Within a few hours, you can be in Pokola, which is, you know, a massive, a comparatively massive town with medical facilities, shops. I said life is definitely a bit more comfortable here along the river. So you can see that the Bantu are like much greater in sort of physical stature to the Benjeli, and I guess that's why historically they've been able to dominate them. Is that where we're going? We're going to where that massive tree is, which is basically the Bantu chief's house. With no access to a judicial system, the Benjeli go to the Bantu court to resolve their disputes. The Bantu chief Pascal and his fellow elders will listen to testimonies from both sides. I can't see Prince yet. There he comes, yeah, I can see him. And after considering eyewitness accounts, the chief will deliver his final verdict. Pascal. 
C'est tout. 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 C'est Kaka Oyo, il y a plus de gens qui ont été témoins. Il y a Il y a des gens qui ont été très bien. Ils ont été très bien. Ils ont été The courts ruled in Mondonga's favor and as punishment has confiscated Prince's gun. <laughs> Angered at the verdict, Prince is sounding off Banter Chief was in the middle of giving his verdict and then Prince, who just stormed off, got into a massive fight with somebody else. I do kind of worry for Mundongo, Akai and the rest of the family now because Prince was fucking angry just then. And uh, there is, you know, a group of people that he owns that he can let his anger out on. And uh, that is a bit of a worry. What did you make of the verdict? Are you at all worried about Prince and you know the fact that he is quite angry now? Yeah. A week later, life in Bonginda is back to normal. Proper little house party. During my time living with Mama and her family, 
Mama's eldest, Akaya, has endured a turbulent time with her husband, Kengule. Just a few weeks ago, Akaya said their marriage was over and there was even talk of Kengule taking another wife. But recently, the two of them have been getting on pretty well. She's definitely uh, grinding up against him a little bit. And I don't think he minds. This love story is not over. <laughs> and for his part, Kengule seems to be making a real effort. Oh, it's so interesting. Kengule is hanging around the house a lot. But not just kind of popping around to see the kids. He is like hanging around with Akaya's brothers, the dads, sitting around smoking, having a laugh. And uh, would you really do that if you weren't still interested in trying to keep in with them? <laughs> But one afternoon, the family's peace and quiet is shattered when Kengule incurs the wrath of the village elder. This is Akaya's mum's auntie, and uh, she's very, very pissed off with Kengule. This lady, Mafiki, and her adult granddaughter have been staying at a jungle camp outside Bonginda. Why are you so angry with Kengule? <laughs> Oh my God, I can understand why you're so angry. Mafiki is alleging that Kengule came to her camp and tried to seduce her granddaughter. This accusation is another blow for Akaya, who'd seemed so happy to have Kengule back on the scene. Does he want another woman, and why does he want another woman? When you go to a book, a boy, Bango Balungani Mambanda, you want a melon game, Motaqui, a meddling guy, boy, ya in a man, boy, I am one yaka beto, be woman to keep over you, ah, Medeba, me and that, Mengae be. I mean, Nava, Bushinani. Polygamy might be quite common in Bonginda, but Akaya clearly doesn't want to share her husband. They're tied by kids, so their relationship is not going to end. Just a normal night at home, party going on next door. My Benjeli hosts are having a quiet night in. And Akaya's taking care of her two kids. After being accused of making advances on another woman, Akaya's husband Kengule has spent the night drinking next door. <laughs> Nakutu, Nakutu, Papa, I'm genuinely scared. <laughs> 
And Lilo's just stormed into the fucking hut in the middle of the night and there's a massive fight going on outside and uh, between him and Akaya. I've got absolutely no idea what it's about, but... Outside the house, Akaya and her family are grappling with Kengule. <laughs> Some villagers who stepped in to stop the fight lead Kangaroo away. It's coming down to the other side of the village to go to Kengule's house. And I do wonder, um, he was absolutely paralytic last night, if he actually even remembers what happened. Hey, Kengule? Yeah. Hey, I'd love to have a chat with you. You happy to talk to me? Yeah? Do you want to come and sit outside? Yeah, can you bend down? Those injuries, eh? Do you feel bad about what happened last night? Do fights often get violent between you and Akaya? I what do you think the future holds now? Hurt you anywhere? Jambo <laughs> Fights flare up easily here, you know, and domestic violence is so much more part of everyday life. And it is part of people's relationships. 
<laughs> and people are just laughing about it. <laughs> They're already like reenacting what happened last night, and that's a very sort of Ben Jelly thing to do. Is the women in particular? <laughs> when either something very bad has happened or something very funny they like to reenact exactly what happened and it tends to be the older women in the community that have the sort of authority and the power to do that reenacting and there's Musengi doing it now this is called a muadja <laughs> <laughs> this playful reenactment of mocks wrongdoers, relieves tension, and enlightens others on how they should behave. And if anything sums up the incredible spirit and resilience of the Benjeli, it's this performance ritual. Next time, before I say goodbye to Bonginda, I discover divorce. Death. And new life in the jungle. Oh my god, the baby is so tiny, it's literally just popped out.